Yeah. Okay, I, we have 180 people here. I think we can start our presentation. Any questions that you have, please type them into the chat. Uh, and we will have a brief Q&A at the end. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. All right, thank you. So my name is Hayford Xiao, uh, the Chief Executive of the Ghana Library Authority. And I'll be presenting on libraries as a, a community anchors. So the Ghana Library Authority uh, is an agency of the government of Ghana uh, that is mandated by uh, the laws of Ghana to be responsible for the establishment, uh, equipping, uh, managing and maintaining uh, public libraries uh, in Ghana. And over the years, um, 71 years now, we've consciously been working to become um, you know, a, a hub for um, Is everything okay? If we can go into presentation mode on the slides. Sorry, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we could hear you. You said that it became a hub. Yes, so over the years, uh, we've consciously been working to become a hub for learning in multiple domains and also to uh, aid in workforce development and provide resources in the form of materials uh, and active learning opportunities for the Ghanaian population. So with this presentation, I'll be shedding light on innovative programs uh, that we've been implementing in Ghana, um, you know, to, to actually set out how uh, our libraries are being used as anchor institutions in, in communities of, of Ghana. Just to give you a brief background, Ghana is a country in West Africa. Uh, it's an English-speaking country, um, and um, it's about 30 million uh, people. Uh, divided into 16 administrative uh, regions. Uh, the Library Authority, which is responsible for uh, public library development, has 105 branches uh, that it manages across uh, the country. So some of the innovative projects that I will be talking about in detail in subsequent uh, slides include the Read to Skill project, um, access to computer and internet through uh, the establishment of ICT and innovation hubs, what we call the mobile hands-on and ICT classes project, um, and, and also partnering with telecommunication company, uh, zero rating uh, a library app so that uh, every Ghanaian with a phone can have access to content, automation of some of our services, including the issuance of ISBN and, 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 and ISS and MSN and, and provision of CIP to support the publishing industry. Uh, we also have early grade community reading project and youth engagement center uh, activities. So the vision of the authority has always been to connect every Ghanaian to knowledge resources and to be a leading knowledge services hub uh, in the sub-region to radically improve literacy and development outcomes that transform lives and communities. For 2021, uh, for us as an institution that is mandated or that whose vision is to connect uh, our citizens to knowledge resources, every year we come up with, we, we, you know, we come up with, with some specific objective that we work to achieve. So for 2021, we declare as a year of literacy, and these are the, uh, the, the, the objectives that we set out to do. So we wanted to increase the number of literacy interventions that we've been implementing, build capacity of public librarians and school librarians in, in delivering digital library services, increase the number of library resources available to patrons, expand uh, the library network and create conducive environment um, for learning. So back to the initiatives that I, I, I highlighted on earlier on, um, so these are some of the initiatives that you know we 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 we've implemented to bring the digital digital divide, promote digital access, equity and opportunity and inclusion for the Ghanaian population. So as part of our strategy to radically connect Ghanaians to learning resources through online learning or, uh, or platforms, the Read to Skill project was introduced in 2020. This is an attempt to bring the gap between job market 
an educational institution. The authority, which is the agency that I managed in partnership with other international bodies, such as the CEO of Commonwealth of Learning, was able to secure over 35,000 licenses for Ghanaians on MOOCs platform, uh, specifically Coursera and Udemy, to help interested applicants upgrade and regrade uh, themselves. So uh, Commonwealth of Learning, we partnered with them, and we're the first country to actually roll out this opportunity uh, for, for, for our citizens within, uh, uh, within the Commonwealth fraternity. So we've got a license to be able to make sure we get opportunity for these Ghanaians uh, to get online uh, and, and study. The authority had over 145,309 learners enrolling on various uh, courses. Uh, like, you know, for MOOCs and learning on MOOCs, you know, you have a lot of people enrolling, but probably not all of them are able to uh, graduate. So we have 9,616 were able to graduate with 22,971 certificates uh, being acquired by learners in various uh, fields of study. Another intervention is that we've been uh, working on to be able to um, um, you know, make uh, libraries as anchors in communities as partner with telecommunication companies to zero it uh, the Ghana Library app. And earlier on, when I mentioned the Read to Sky, I did not even give the background with respect to how it has been really helpful over the COVID period. Because over the COVID period, when people were at home and, you know, schools were closed, you know, universities shut down and, you know, uh, opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, remote learning was quite difficult. We came in with this opportunity for Ghanaians to get uh, access to actually uh, acquiring new knowledge and, and, and getting these uh, certificates, which some people, you know, have ventured entrepreneurship. Some people have transitioned to, to other jobs, you know, that they had the opportunity to be, uh, to, to gain new skills in. Now, when COVID happened, uh, around 2019, the Ghana Library Authority had developed an app. This app, just like everywhere in the world, like you can have Overdrive having their Libby platform and a lot of uh, 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 public libraries across the world do have all, all their own various app. Ghana, uh, we are probably the only public library in, within the sub-region uh, that has its own uh, mobile app. And when COVID happened, the government of Ghana uh, supported the Ghana Library Authority to actually enhance our app. Now, what would we do with this enhancement? Uh, the Ghana Education Service, which is responsible for pre tertiary education, and the Center for Distance and Open Schooling were creating video content, but they did not have a medium within which they can reach the Ghanaian population or the Ghanaian students that had, that had their schools shut down and were at home and not doing anything. So through the Ghana Library Authority, we were able to get all of these learning resources, these video tutorials, which were thought, which were delivered by the most brilliant and the most... Um, the most, uh, uh, um, you know, the most brilliant uh, teachers in Ghana. We put all of these videos on the Ghana Library app. Now, this Ghana Library app, we went into a, a partnership and an arrangement with telecom companies in Ghana, and they zero it our platform. So the platform be, you know, offered an opportunity for both the person who has money and both the person who does not have money to buy data to be able to access learning resources without paying for it. And that, for me, was really a breakthrough with respect to, you know, uh, bridging uh, the, the, the digital divide and promoting, you know, uh, access to content uh, through this uh, through this space. Uh, the Ghana government also uh, uh, relied on the Ghana Library Authority to deploy a learning management system. Uh, uh, you know, working with uh, NetDragon, you know, uh, it, it's 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 platform called Edmodo. So we had to upload and make sure that there's a lot of learning content on the learning management system, so that it's also linked also to the digital library for content to you know to to be to also be uploaded. So when teachers who have the opportunity to be able to communicate with their student through the learning management system. They can actually pull content also from the digital library and make it available for, 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 the, for the LNS. And these platforms, uh, these platforms, you know, are, are zero rated uh, in Ghana. Another, another opportunity that we have been offering uh, for the Ghanaian population it's access to computer internet through what we call the ICT hubs uh, and ICT 
or ICT hubs and technology and innovation hubs. So as, as, a, as a library institution, we recognize the need for different partnership to be able to advance the course for which uh, you know, we were set up to, uh, what we were set up for. So we work with what we call the Ghana, Infa Ghana, uh, Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication, GIFIC. We work with Vodafone. Uh, they have a foundation, we work with them. And they support us to be able to uh, put computers at our various uh, libraries uh, across the country. And currently, as I speak to you, have about 50% of our libraries across the country uh, that have computers in there that we use in serving our patrons. These computers, of course, provide an opportunity for people to come and use it and also be able to do uh, distance and remote learning. We also conduct digital, uh, also conduct, you know, uh, digital literacy or ICT related courses at our various libraries also so that people that need skills in training and just probably just coding just a Microsoft Office suite or really basically everything graphic design or whatever we have people that use our library spaces or the ICT hubs or technology hubs to be able to train uh, people that are interested in acquiring uh, these new uh, uh, acquiring skills. So this is something that as a library institution also we offer. I know that in some countries is the Book Development Council that issues the international standard book numbers and all of that. But we over the COVID period, we automated this process. In the past, you need to probably travel maybe 500 kilometers uh, to, to the national capital to be able to apply for ISBN. But now uh, we have we, we have bridged the digital divide. We, we, we've promoted digital assets by now making sure that if you go on library.gov.gh, which is our website, you can be able to apply, uh, pay by using your mobile phone, actually. So in Ghana, uh, unlike other parts of the world where you would enter your credit card and make payments, in Ghana, your mobile phone also becomes your wallet. And so it's, it's one of the mediums that we have been able to use to promote financial inclusion. And people are able to uh, get their services done you know, uh, through that. Another very uh, beautiful project we've been working on, which is the mobile uh, hands-on ICT class, which uh, uh, you know, which we've, uh, uh, in December, there will be a public announcement on it uh, by, uh, at, the, at the United Nations uh, Public Service Forum in Dubai of, the, of, of how we've used this project to make a significant impact and will be awarded as such is that um, we have, in Ghana, we have mobile library vans that I manage under the library authority. And we have on these mobile vans, not only books, but these vans also comes with computers because we recognize that most of our citizens don't have access to computers, but our students are also being taught what we call an ICT as a subject in their schools. So whilst we are providing reading materials in the form of books, we also send these laptops. And these laptops that we currently use, we partnered with the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication to procure them and put on the van. Our personnel who are also trained to be able to teach ICT goes with these, uh, these uh, uh, laptops with the books in, in the van, go to these villages. And then whilst they make the books available, also we are able to also uh, use the computers to teach some students ICT. So a school that have uh, an ICT class that have probably taught the theory, but they have not, they haven't gotten the opportunity for the practical aspect to be done. We use that to be able to help. And what we have recorded over the period is that a uh, student that have had the opportunity to be able to ex have the experiential, uh, uh, or have the experiment or have been able to practicalize their teaching through the computers we've provided has actually scored more marks in their final exams. And so that's a really remarkable uh, uh, record that we've managed to chalk with that particular uh, project. And, and you will realize that year on year on, we have consistently have an increase in students who are uh, 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 passing and, and the slide shows uh, 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 the slide shows evidence of that with 20, 2019 recording about 85 percent of students uh, passing. So over the COVID period also, we work uh, with the support of UNICEF. We, we instituted a program we call the early grade community reading intervention. Again, using our mobile vans, we're able to go to um, communities and schools and we're able to curate uh, 
learning resources, particularly targeting early grade readers. We package these books, we put it in, uh, in, in, in bags, and we are able to distribute it into communities, uh, go to homes and give it this to uh, 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 so we, we hand over the books to the teachers in the community who knows the houses of their students and they are able to deliver these packages uh, to the students. And these were targeted remote communities that we know that they are so deprived that if we are not careful, the, the, um, the learning loss that is going to uh, occur should school reopen will be massive. So this intervention was targeted at these six regions of Ghana with some specific districts and communities for these interventions to be uh, Im implemented. The initiative among eight targets population also include, of course, uh, children with special needs. It's also build the capacity of teachers in library management and effective reading methods for improved literacy outcome. So one of the things we did as part of this project is that we brought teachers also together to be able to train Uh, 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 to be able to train them. So started another project we call the Youth Engagement, establishing what we call the Youth Engagement Centers in Ghana. After recognizing the need to impact Ghanaians with digital entrepreneurial and advocacy uh, skills and to also empower them with opportunities to tackle unemployment, the centers will create supportive environment for young people to freely express themselves and equip them with skills to live responsible and productive life. These centers, which are created in our public library settings, provides a conducive environment for people to connect to connect to knowledge resources, which in turn improve literacy, uh, to improve literacy, improve uh, the lives of the individuals. This form part of, of course, the broad authorities at the agenda to engage young people and to provide avenues to equip themselves with uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge and skills. So regarding security and privacy is also something that we, we, we really uh, are big on. Um, the Ghana Library Authority systems and application are protected with multiple system security software and practices that ensure that systems are robust and insulated from attacks. Of course, it's all also within as a government institution, of course, within the policy frameworks and the laws governing uh, data and privacy, we also work to, of course, maintain uh, them. In conclusion, the Ghana Library Authority vision to connect every Ghanaian to knowledge resources. Therefore, in order to attain this, the Ghana Library Authority has created several initiatives and implemented several policies to encourage Ghanaians to want to improve their learning and literacy. To sum up all these initiatives, among others, I mean, are all aimed at improving the lives of, of Ghanaians. And that is what we've been working on as a library authority. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Now I will be happy to answer questions. Yeah, that's great. I think I, ha I have a question here that was um, uh, put into chat and someone asked the population of Ghana, but I think that was answered already about 30 million. And then the question is what percentage of the population is considered rural underprivileged uh, with insufficient internet and uh, access Well, there's a, there's a, I, I didn't prepare for this, <laughs> but um, so the, the interesting thing, however, in Ghana is that mobile phone penetration is over 130%. So, which means that over the years, there's been a significant rise in, 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 in mobile phone penetration in Ghana. And the penetration means that there's also a huge penetration in, in data and connectivity. And currently about 40% of people that have mobile phones are connected, you know, in some way, uh, somehow to data. Uh, and this is mainly, mainly the spread out is mainly through uh, mobile connectivity. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone have more questions? Please uh, type them into chat. This has been such a great uh, presentation. So much information. You mentioned COVID uh, briefly. Uh, yes. How was how did you respond to that when you first when it first came up? I mean, how um, what was that like? What was your experience there with library services? So, so, uh, so 
so, so for COVID, uh, there's a question here also about how big are the library vans you mentioned and how many are they? Um, we have 10 vans currently on the road. Uh, I'm hoping that by the end of this year, I'm adding uh, two more vans uh, uh, to, to the network to make it 12. Um, for COVID, when COVID happened, I mean, just like many other institutions, we closed down uh, our static library and began an aggressive uh, pursuit of, of, of connecting people through our digital platforms. And so uh, that was how come we attracted uh, central government to even support us to enhance our library, our digital library infrastructure, so that they can even give us content so that students there are over um, uh, 9 million students that were affected by close down of schools can have access to uh, content on our digital library uh, uh, platforms. And so um, uh, that was how you know, uh, severe uh, the, the impact was on Ghanaian students. We even worked uh, with the uh, Ghana Education Service to, uh, and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation to come up with a TV station uh, called the Ghana Learning TV, and we curated content also, also for Ghanaians to be able to, uh, uh, Ghanaian students, of course, to be able to be connected uh, through uh, also uh, uh, television. Uh, USAID also supported uh, us and the Ghana Education Service to also even do audio, audio, audio lessons uh, so that we can be able to disseminate uh, to Ghanaian uh, students. And, and so over the COVID period, um, we have been very, very, very uh, busy. Uh, and, and whilst our static libraries were closed, our mobile library vans through the early grade, early grade reading program was also out there, making sure that we reach out. So when we say frontline staff, uh, you know, who were, who were at the forefront of, of or, and, and making themselves available to serve the, uh, the people, I think library staff, or librarians were also frontline staff, were also frontline personnel in, 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 in this, in, in their pursuit to be able to connect uh, our citizens to knowledge uh, resources. And so we provided a lot of PPEs. We provide a lot of PPEs for them to be able to uh, use uh, whilst they go on the, on the road. If you don't mind, and you can just Google uh, Ghana Mobile Library Van, you can just see a picture of it. It's really an old van. <laughs> we have 10 of them that uh, we've rebranded them in 2018 that we are, we are using. Uh, the pictures are the Ghana Library Vans. You will see uh, an image of them. It's a Benz bus. Uh, 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 not that very big, but, uh, and we've just acquired uh, a Toyota Costa uh, bus that we've, uh, we've built it, um, uh, we've multi, uh, multi-purposely built for, uh, for, for, for mobile library uh, services also in Ghana. I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat and I wanna make use of our time. I'm wondering what, what do so, you see as so the challenges on the, uh, Landscape for you. <laughs> Sorry, there's also a question of what is the coverage of the libraries in the rural areas as compared to the cities in Ghana? Okay, right. so, so we have a huge, uh, a huge number of our population not having access to libraries, not having access to static library services. Uh, actually, we have 16 regions of Ghana. Out of these 16 regions, um, out of these 16 regions, 15 of them have you know, uh, uh, have uh, uh, libraries, um, um, but even those that we claim to have a certain concentration of libraries, not it's probably maybe one city or one town in there that have uh, libraries. To just give you a bit of perspective, so we have 260 district, administrative governing district, 260 of them. Out of these 260 of them, we have 105 libraries that are concentrated on 70, in 74 of these districts. So you will realize that I have over 160 plus districts that I don't have libraries that I need to work to be able to have libraries in them by 2030. Is someone asking about the budget, your annual budget? So um, 
So until really recently, the, our, our budget is nothing to write home about, sorry. <laughs> but just as in a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, African countries, uh, we are even doing better. I have, I have uh, 566 staff uh, scattered across these 104 uh, libraries. And our budget is in the region of almost $5 million per year. Hello? Okay, so I see, do your libraries provide services for free? Yes, so our libraries provide services for free. So um, most of the activities that we run are for free. You can enter the library, you can sit down, you can pick a book and read. Uh, we organize um, uh, various trainings and workshops and you know, uh, writers workshops and all of that. These are offered also for free um, uh, in, in communities where schools uses our ICT hubs. The teachers bring the students and they, that's what they use in ICT tutorials. I, I, if, if you recollect, I mentioned in my presentation that 50% of our libraries have uh, computers in them uh, through the support of Vodafone Foundation and GIFIC. And we are able to you know, uh, uh, get students come and use this um, uh, these computers for free if they come with their teacher to be taught but of course we also have interventions and programs that we organize which people pay uh, a few cents to be able to access them of course if you want to be a member of the library um we we, we, we you you have to pay to be able to uh, borrow but because we know the uh, huge um, uh, economic uh, disparity within our system what we do run uh, to be able to support a lot more uh, uh, people, um, a lot more young people to be able to have access to our opportunity is to have what we call the library scholarship program. So for example, last year, for example, we had UNICEF uh, sponsor over 10,000 kids to be library members so that they can borrow books for, for free. You know, so those interventions are also there that we run to be able to uh, get a mass number of, 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 of children uh, registering to be, uh, uh, to be library members and to be able to borrow the books. But if you don't want to borrow and you want to sit in the library space to be able to read, you don't have to pay anything. But once you want to borrow and take and take the book home, uh, then if you are not able to, if you are not able to afford, we need to find a sponsor. Uh, for you and it is just one cent actually uh, it's uh, one, one, one dollar one dollar for a whole year so it's really it's just it's just a it's just a it's just symbolic not really something that changes anything that thank you so much i know everyone's been really engaged in this and learned so much um and, and just want to let everyone know that we'll have access to the recording as well and will we have access to the slides or? Yes, we will share it with you. Great, great. Okay, well, it's two o'clock here anyway in California. And thank you so much. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So everyone who joined us, thank you too. No, I'm going to be looking. Um, into that, I the mobile libraries. I'm very curious about. Um, we're having uh, an, a program uh, next month about uh, mobile libraries across the world. So I will definitely oh, be wow. including Ghana in that. <laughs> yes, please do. And if you need any information, please feel free to let me know. I will. I will. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I think everyone enjoyed this. So we had a, I think we had 180 participants. So oh, that's, that's a, yeah, yeah. And I had people typing into chat where they were from. So we really, I think there were every state <laughs> in the United States, Canada, uh, Ghana, and Australia, New Zealand. So yeah, there was, there were um, quite dispersed geographically. So it's just good to see everyone engaged. Wow, wow.
So, oh, I should, should say we can stop the recording. Okay, so I can leave? Yeah, 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 thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. goodbye, bye -bye. yes, goodbye.